Hi. Hi. Oh, so much. How are you? Oh, oh, good. I can't believe we're doing this. Hey, girl. Hey, guys. Hi. Welcome to my messy kitchen. Sorry. <laughs> no, have your kitchen. I just forget we're all like full adults now. Okay, here comes Kevin and Matt Nolan. Oh, Kevin. Hello. oh my God. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. Hi, everybody. Hi, girl. Hi, love. How you are look you? Beautiful. Oh, Thanks. Yeah. I wore yellow for you. Good. I didn't think I'm I sorry. Color. I'm not wearing the right color. <laughs> That's okay. I have a much darker shade of green. On. Good. Here comes it's, in the name. it's in the name, Kev. You're fine. You guys, this is just my dream come true. This is wild. I can't even tell you. Austin! Hi! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Ah! <laughs> I didn't know that I was going to have this reaction. Eddie! Oh my gosh! It's so Eddie! You're all so beautiful. Oh my gosh! It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh. I haven't seen so many of your faces in so long. I know. It feels like a hundred years. Hey, Kathleen, you're really right. We are literally all grown ups. Look at us. We look like adults. I, know. <laughs> I have to say, I think you Thank all God. look exactly the same. You look exactly the same. You really do. Yeah. Don't Thank you think? We've all, we've, all, we've all aged very well. I, oh, I believe. Kathleen, congrats. How has the response oh. been? Thank yesterday? you. We've gotten really positive reviews, which is awesome. And um, yeah, it's it's in a, it's a it's in a really cool experience for me to like have the movie out. Oh my, oh my god. god! Just watching your movie, I was like, ah, PTSD. Yeah, me you too. Were yeah so I was like, you back because you went through the experience with me. <laughs> what are your reflections on the movie based on having the same experience as I did? First five minutes. You were so exposed and it was it was harrowing to oh. watch you be in those it was so familiar it was like being it was like standing over your shoulder the whole time and yeah. and the vulnerability aspect that you brought to it kathleen it was so good thank uh, you yeah you really you did a fantastic job of of letting the viewer know what those moments were like you you kind of brought the reality to the reality yeah awesome Austin awesome. I know you're a filmmaker too which we need to talk about so thank you I really really take that in thank you was it PTSD uh, you guys I thought oh I don't know who wants to go I don't want to jump on it actually no you go ahead well my heart was racing from like the beginning which is like a way to like you know, grasped an audience like immediately, which I thought was so well done. And yeah, like Austin said, I felt like I was right there with you from the get go, having gone through this with you. But I just want to say how incredibly brave and you are for doing this and putting this all out there. And I mean, we truly all know because we went through this experience, but you really did make everybody else feel like who's watching this movie, what we went through. I think you captured it beautifully. I think people don't realize, you know, when you're watching reality TV, that it's not reality. And so getting a glimpse of this, hopefully will make people understand a little bit more, but nobody truly can <laughs> understand. And just like how you have to like reincorporate yourself back into like real life when things are over and how you readjust to things and how you kind of lose yourself a little bit and how you have to find who you are again. and there were just so many aspects that were just so I just was like nodding my head the entire time and like just agreeance of like everything kind of came very full circle and I'm just I'm so it, that takes a lot of courage and bravery on your part and almost it had to be therapeutic for you to like yeah. be able to do this and share this experience I'm just I'm very proud Thank Very you. Really so sweet. awesome. Well, it, this right now with you guys means so much to me because clearly I feel like I've carried you through this whole process and then to put this movie out and then get to talk to you about it. When I started writing this, I did it because I, I can, kind of didn't realize that I held the rejection of the show in my everyday life ever since the show. I had to really dig into this, like, why was it so bad? You know, like, what did I really carry along? And I think I ended up finding a story about 
myself and like having to find my real win and what that is and that I was in my own way and all these different things. But, you know, I, I want to ask you guys coming out at the same question, like, why was it so hard? You reposted your goodbye to Sandra D thing the other day. <laughs> and like that for me, like totally brought everything back. It was like, you all like literally had to sing yourself off, which was so just horrendous and traumatic. And I think at the time we all just didn't know any better. We were all just such babies that yeah. we were okay being completely kind of taken advantage of and thrown around. And as we, I think we all got older, do you remember feeling feeling all of that immediately or did it kind of set in over the years about how actually hurtful and weird the whole thing was maybe it both until somebody else told me how weird it was that I realized how weird it was I actually like didn't process it until someone was like you had to sing yourself off the show after you lost and it's like oh yeah that is kind of a dick move isn't it like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. and now like, sing for your last time yeah. oh my god in your movie <laughs> to like get it, like get to the point where you almost peed because you're so nervous standing there waiting for the answer and then like find out you lost and then they're like okay go sing in front of five million people one more time and you're like and don't be emotional about it no you're like I, I need to sing, I need to sing <laughs> this really well be happy about it yeah. <laughs> you know, like don't hug each other you have to hug. You're like oh okay no. yeah the thing I found the most weird and watching in retrospect which is like funny but also so deeply embarrassing were the little <laughs> conversations that they had us shoot off stage in the wings with the oh, camera yeah. people where they'd be like why are you more deserving than that girl and you're like uh, yes no i have to horrible the world but she's cool too you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no way around it one of the stories I always tell about being on the reality show is when we used to go in the closet, that big old closet that we would all Boring closet. And, and sit around and drink and talk about like what everyone was gonna say about everyone else so they can use any of it. It's like, if we all say this about Allie, then that's one thing. We all oh. say the same thing about Kate. We all say the same thing. Like everybody would just like, mm -hmm. there was one sound bite that we all agreed to about every person so that it never actually became like, why am I do, why should I get this over someone else? I'm just like, no, we're not doing that. We're not ganging up on each other. This is stupid. Right. right. And I still to this day think it's astounding that obviously tensions ran high, but we all got along surprisingly well considering the situation that we were yeah. in. And I still like, that is like a stake I always like put in the ground when everyone asked me about the reality shows. I was like, we all, we got by pretty well. Like it wasn't perfect, but we all liked each well, other, you know, for also, the most part. It's pretty amazing. We, we did burn off steam in interesting ways at the same yeah. time. You know, when, when someone got eliminated, we would we would take their food out of the fridge and try and throw it into the pool, you know. <laughs> you guys we are, are poor. our porn star mansion lived in. Oh our my god, are we surfing down the courses. stairs? Oh, mattress surfing down the yes! stairs. Was it yes! mattress surfing? Yes. Like, and we played a very dangerous end. game of what was it was like hide and seek or tag off the cliff of the oh, mansion, yeah. like Party. walking around like yes. we could have gotten hurt. I don't think we the could. obstacle courses we built in the living room out of all the furniture. <laughs> yeah. I would oh, love to see the footage of us at the mansion that they never aired. And like us just being, you know, kind of a-holes to the guys who were like stuck there, like say it again, say it again. <laughs> Yes, or how they tried to like follow us into the bathroom. I remember like showering or something and coming out in a towel and be like, no, yes. that's <laughs> not okay. Horrible. <laughs> I was just gonna, I was gonna say, has anyone gotten a spray tan since? Hello? I haven't. <laughs> what, you know, the movie is about this month between when you get eliminated and then you come back for the finale. That was my goal the whole time because that was a really heightened time for me especially, I mean, there was a heightened time after that, years after that still. But what was life like for you guys when you left the show? Uh, I, I did a mall concert, so that resonated <laughs> with me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just, I remember, it was just so surreal. Like you didn't know where your, your place was. You're, you're kind of known locally, but not really, you know? And you could walk anywhere and no one would recognize you. But you're like, wait, I was just, I was just on TV, you know? So like, yeah. there's this kind of weird shift of like all the attention is on you completely to like none of it. Um, yeah. yeah, it was really surreal. I remember going back to my restaurant job in New York 
And I, y'all, I was working at Red Lobster in Times Square. Like this was like a very humbling, like horrible life shift of like, I just went from being on TV and now I'm schlupping lobsters and crab meat. And I was like, what is happening? Like yeah. it, that felt really in the movie. I feel like you captured that really beautifully. How she like, she walks out the stage door and then she like gets in her car and she, you're like counting. You have like $4 or something. You're like, well, I guess I'll get gas so I can get from point A to point B. It's like the, the reality of like, you're on this big show. So people think like, oh, you're like rich and famous and all this stuff. And then you go back to reality and you're like, oh, I'm still just kind of a starving artist trying yeah. to make it and trying to figure out what my voice is. I was scared every day. That was my biggest takeaway was mm -hmm. from my time on the show was just being scared a lot. Even though I was putting myself in very brave situations, I was still very scared throughout so much of that process. So for me watching it, a lot of those thoughts come back, but also I watched it now with just so much more maturity than I had at that age. So that's the other unique thing to watch it and remember feeling that way, even though now watching it from my brain and point of view now, I'm like, why did you care that much? Why did you worry about that much? Like I was so not relaxed. I was so never myself. I watched certain interviews and I'm like, just, I wanna like grab myself and be like, just relax and just talk. And like so much of what made it on TV of myself was not myself. I am, I agree with Matt so much. I see clips from the show and I tried so hard to curate myself instead of just being myself. Um, that camera guy, Josh, he always wanted to get me washing the dishes and I wouldn't do it. I would stop and I would walk out of the kitchen because I was like, no, I don't, hot Danny doesn't wash dishes. You know what I mean? And uh, like <laughs> trying to cultivate what people were seeing instead of just being, my real self was a lot cooler than that guy I was trying to yeah. you know, show. I remember being like, I have to have a ponytail this week or they won't think I'm, I'm young and, and I, I can't do, you know, I have to give me a ponytail. And I was like this weird anal retentive with a sweaty upper lip about getting a ponytail. And then I look at myself in the episode and I'm like, <laughs> I should have just let the girl put the hair on me that I should have had like don't we were all labeled before yeah. anyone knew who we were we were labeled and kind of forced to like pigeonhole our stories were pigeonholed into that identity for the whole run of the show I feel the same way that you're talking about now in terms of like I feel like before the tv show happened I was fearless going I was living in New York I was fearless going to getting up at 4 a.m. and going to these open calls and nothing was in my way. I was going to get that job that I, I was auditioning for. And then doing the show, it just instilled so much fear in me. And I became a person that I didn't recognize. And it was all very new. And I feel like I discovered that like halfway through the filming, mm. like halfway through the episodes. So I, I feel like I went from being this like green, cheery person who was like open to like, like I was a sponge, like all of us you know, absorbing all of this stuff into figuring out, oh, we're not in control of any of this. Mm -hmm. And then you feel trapped. And then I just felt like, oh shit. Like, I felt like I couldn't get out of that from then this for like the second half of the show. And then I carried that mm -hmm. with me throughout like years and years, even though I did, I was very fortunate enough to like work on Broadway and do things, but I feel like I was not my best self. Mm -hmm. Um. And I wish I would have gone to therapy a lot sooner <laughs> and talked about it. No, truly, because I didn't talk about it until years and years after. And I feel like I did myself a disservice and holding on to that because um, I did the same thing. I carried it into rooms with me and everywhere I went. And I was like, just I felt like this a shell of myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel this way, Ashley, but it's literally what you said earlier, Kathleen, which is like, you come out of it and you go like, this is normal. This is what it's supposed to be. So like tough up and get past it. And yeah. that's not true. Like it's not, it wasn't just an audition. It was a, it was a whole world we had to go live in and a whole, yeah. we, I mean, we had, we had a lot of Kool-Aid to drink, no matter how long we were there, there was a lot of Kool-Aid fed to us for a very long time. And yeah. like, I, I feel the same way. I'm like, I wish I had gone to therapy afterwards and like processed it, the loss and the manipulation and all of the things that were all the lies and all of the like crazy that we were sort of put through and, and trapped in for that yeah. time because I came out of it and tried so hard to like push through it, work past it. Like it's just another audition. Don't even think about it. And that's not true. That's not what the experience was. That's not what 
we did we mean no first of all god save us if we ever have to go through an audition that lasts that long but second of all like, <laughs> the, the, i mean what they're so good at this is what when i talk about being on it i'm like you have to remember that these are people whose professional like nine to five is manipulation their job is to manipulate the people on tv and the people watching tv I was like, and they're so good at it. And I just, it took me years to process how much we had been messed with and, and tricked and, and maneuvered to get that, you know, to get the product that they wanted. And even though we were very good at not doing that as a group, I think we really pushed back against that very well. Mm -hmm. we still, it still happened. It was still part of our reality. And so coming back to it is like, I mean, there, it's not PTSD by any means, but it's in the same vein, you know, that feeling mm -hmm. of being lied to and manipulated for however long about something you care so much about and right you know at the beginning of all of our careers it's like we right. had we had like healing to do but yeah like, for me it was just work so I didn't have to you know I thought I didn't have to do that right hey, Rockwell you are uptown at my brownstone and my mom was in town and you the two of you were standing around the island in my kitchen and you looked over at her at my mom I wasn't even in the room my mom reminded me of this the other day and you said, today's the one year anniversary of when America rejected me. <laughs> That's oh, dark, God. dark shit. Yeah. Dark no. shit. Serious Sandy. Rejected me. I mean, I, just living up to my name, Serious Sandy. <laughs> no, but like rejected me. I mean, rejection's so real. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish in hindsight, now that we've, we're, you know, we're beyond the show and got, going through this movie, I wish I would have had perspective that I was a cast member on a variety show. It wasn't life or death that I would get this part and then my whole life would become what I wanted. I had always carried the what if and everything I auditioned for and didn't get, I'd always be like, well, if I had one, I, I would be on Broadway. I would have a job. I'd be happy. I'd be, I, I had that. I lived with that. And it just continued, that root system just took further root, like over and over. So we're 13 years later, and I now live in New Orleans. I'm in New York a ton, but in New Orleans. And we finished the movie, and I'm on a walk. And it like, of course, I was like asking God, like looking at, looking at things, you know, spiritual Sandy. And I just saw it like a movie trailer, how... I was supposed to be on the show and I was supposed to get rejected and I was supposed to be eliminated so I could make this movie. <laughs> and it like, I was so grateful. Does the reality show and the experience still live with you? In your life, personally, in your career, in anything. There's one thing that happened in an acting scene with Max where every time we went to kiss, they did a big X for our faces. <laughs> and for years, it made me think that I was either a bad kisser or that I was really bad at acting romantic. And I, that always is in my head. It was like an X and it was like, Arr! every time we kiss. <laughs> and that's still so deep in. Wild. Really? Interesting, interestingly enough for me, I, I'm, we're actually working with David Ian. Because <laughs> we, I, I general manage the National Tour of Jesus Christ Superstar right now, and his company is going to be producing the same tour, but in the UK. So it's wow, do you it's very you, surreal? Yeah. Are you, are you talking to him? Yeah, yeah. It's really, do, do you know, you want to tell him how traumatizing he was. For <laughs> me? I was going to say I still have my Jesus Christ Superstar dress. I bought that dress from them so like I still have that and I think one other outfit that I wore on the show which is just kind of funny this is my I have some too jackets yes oh my god I, I love it <laughs> I, I have the leather jacket somewhere still the one that we wore I, I bought that right Kathleen your hair looked amazing in the whole film yes <laughs> it, it was another character it that's was yes, yeah. but it's your like hair. humidity. <laughs> Kathleen, that's a memory that I, I like probably at least once a month. I think about your hair because <laughs> you said this thing. You said this thing that I will never forget. Oh, no. You're like you guys, my hair looks like a horseback riding instructor, and I said <laughs> and so, it did. 
That's what I love about you making the movie, Kathleen, as everybody has said, your bravery, that you found redemption somehow in it. And it's taken a long time, but everybody's experience is 100% valid. You can't tell someone not to feel as disappointed or if you weren't that disappointed, you went on with your life, then good for you too. That's great. But like everybody has difficult experiences that they have gone through in their lifetime and right. to see how you deal with it and how you are able to move forward. And maybe it takes a year, maybe it takes five years, maybe it takes 13 years, but it's like, how are you going to use those experiences to grow you as a person, as a human, as an artist? And now you have this movie to show for that. And it's really so, so cool. And I just want to draw attention to if for people that did watch it, the little like nods to the show, the Easter eggs that you put in for all of us, that your hometown was Sandy mm. and that you, like, I remember you getting criticized for wearing peach. And then you have that line about like the camera adds 10 pounds and oh, they put you in mustard, the ugliest color. And you yeah. know what I mean? You're like, that was part of your story and the costume malfunction. The other thing I was going to say is, as we mentioned today too, like Matt and Ashley, remember how we had to like sign our lives away for like seven years to NBC. Yes. Yeah. And I love that you like, you put that in the film also so beautifully that you're like, we're, you're all just waiting. <laughs> yes, you're like yeah. waiting for that big opportunity that you're like, yes, I'm available. Yes, I'll do anything. Oh, what? There's going to be a, a tour with the with all the the cast and like right. we're all just so thirsty for jobs, like so desperate to work, and they knew that, and <laughs> so they're just yeah. like. What you and Laura were saying a little while ago is something that I've noticed that a lot of people get stuck in a certain place in their life. I felt like that happened to me for a while after this experience. I'm not exactly sure when I unstuck myself. Uh, I did, mm. but, um, but yeah, it's um, it's interesting that you would make a movie about somebody getting, because everybody's been stuck somewhere, whether it's, yeah. some people get stuck in high school. Some people yeah. get, you know what I mean? Some people get stuck at their wedding day. Um, that was the moment that defined their life. And so everybody gets yeah. stuck somewhere. Yes. One little thing about the movie that I remember and I loved seeing your hubby in the movie too, is ah. when you're talking, when you're talking to your dead father's ashes and he comes out and he's like, what are you doing? You talking to yourself and whatever. And, and you, and you say something to him about like, about how they packaged you in the show with, mm -hmm. you know, showing your boob on screen and whatever. And he's like, you signed up for that. Like, what are you complaining about? And we've already talked about this, but I just, I love that you brought such attention to that detail. And then you turned around and said to him, like, you know, it's really shitty that this is what your job is. Yeah. Like, how can you kind of live with yourself? Like, are you proud of, of the fact that you, this is how you make your living exposing people and like manipulating people. And cause that is what yeah. we went yeah. through. Yeah. And Sorry, like pop that that. That's so good, Ashley. Love and I like how they kept continuing to play. Like if someone messed up, like there's no guarantee they're going to portray you a yeah. accurately or b well. Like they might purpose to portray you poorly, and you have no control over it. And it's right. it's hard. Yeah. I loved I loved the line, Kathleen, where you're like, you know, I'm a real person, right? Yes. So, right. Yeah. It's like that one hit me like so hard. I was like. Oh yeah, we we were real people, but they treated us like we weren't, and that that was the like the nugget that I think we've probably all carried with us for. I, I just wanted to say, Kathleen, the movie's beautiful. You're stunning in it, and uh, there's something really wonderful about seeing all of your faces. Like I know 15 years has passed, which blows my mind, but there's a connection that we all share because of what we went through. And any time that I see any of your faces, it just takes me back to to when we were in that experience and. I don't think there could have been a more caring and loving group of people put into that, you know, that cauldron that we were in. And uh, I, I'm really proud of how we carried ourselves and I'm proud of, of, you know, how we've all moved forward in our lives. So thank you for making the film. And uh, it's so lovely to see all of you. So You're awesome, Kevin. Thanks, guys. I, I really am so, so grateful that you showed up today and shared what you did share. We love you, Kathleen. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Good to see you all. Thank you. I will be in touch, of course. Yeah, but we so should happy. seriously figure out a way to make a, a yearly <clears throat> thing, something, sit down. Yes. Play <laughs> okay. I agree. We'll do it. New Orleans. We'll do it in New Orleans. You should. Hey. Yeah. <laughs>
happy to host you make a thing. Love Please. you, Kathleen. Good to Thank see you, you all. Good to see you guys. Hey, bye.